In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the snapping grid and the guidelines within the software. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at is the snapping grid. So how do we do that? Well, let's follow my mouse pointer to go to the top right here. And we can left mouse click on this option just here, which you can see is called toggle grid snapping on or off. Now, currently it's off because it's grayed out. But if I left mouse click it, you'll notice it's now in blue. And we now have a grid on our workspace that indicates that it is now on. Now, what is the use of a grid? Well, we can actually use this grid to snap to, to help create our vectors and to help guide our design. So if I come over to the left and click on the draw line slash polyline tool, I can use the grid here to help me make my design. You can notice that when I put my mouse pointer over the points on the grid, it is snapping to them. Now, this will help me for accuracy as well as helping me to guide to make straight lines or angle lines. Uh, in my drawing effort. So if I left mouse click here, I want to make a two inch by two inch square. Now my design is in inches and you can see I have the length field there on the left showing in live dynamic view that it is now two and I snapped to that grid point just there. And we'll come over to the right and you can see that grid point there allows me to snap to two and again and again. So it's really helpful in helping us make some accurate shapes and indeed you can use it to make some other shapes as well. So for example, if I wanted to make a triangle, you can use the grid points here to snap to, to help you make that triangle as well. So it's really helpful in helping you achieve different shapes and different designs. Now if I just make one last shape, I'll just make a diamond shape. So we'll go for uh, this point over here. And we'll go for this point over here. Wonderful. We'll close out the form. And you'll notice I've now got my vector selected. I'm going to left mouse click that. And you'll notice that when I drag this around, because I've got it by the midpoint, the midpoint also snaps to the grid. So this is really helpful for helping me get an accurate move on my workspace. So for example, if I want to go to the middle, I can now snap to that middle point there and the software helps me by putting these guidelines in to help me know that I will be snapping to that middle point or the uh, middle grid point there as well. Now, if you're wondering about how to change the spacing between the grid points, you can actually do that in the snap options. And how do you access that? You go up to edit and snap options. Now you can also click F4 as you've seen here on the keyboard as a shortcut to access that menu as well. Now, we're not going to go into all the options here. That's actually covered in another video, which will be linked down below. That is the uh, snapping options video. But we are going to look at this one here, which is the grid spacing. So the grid spacing is the spacing of the individual grid points here. So if I change that to 5, for example, not 0.5, and I press OK, keep an eye on the grid spacing and what happens to it. You'll notice that it's now further apart because I've set it to be 0.5. So now all of these points are separated or spaced apart by 0.5 inches. Now this is handy, for example, where you may have a design where you are drilling or creating pockets, but they all need to be 0.5 center to center apart. So this could be useful for you in terms of if you need your circle vectors to be 0.5 inches apart from the midpoint, you could set up a grid like this to help you create your vectors. And then all you need to do is go to the circle tool, hover over that grid point there, and you can drag out your circle and then you can do that for the rest of the grid points as well or you could use the array copy tool to aid you with that but just an example of how you can use this to your advantage to try and aid your designs i'm going to go back into the form now by pressing f4 on the keyboard for the shortcut i'm going to change this back down to 0.25 and we'll have a look at some other options that you can do with your grid here so if you follow my mouse pointer to the top left and we'll go to edit and we'll go to options now you'll notice that I have several options here, but we're interested in this one here, this section here called 3D view settings. Now let's scroll down a little bit. And what we want is these two options here is a snap grid color and the snap grid point width. Now, currently, if I move this to the left so you can see what happens, my color is set to gray. Well, let's change that. Let's left mouse click on that. And I've got this grid here that I can choose the colors with, or indeed I can set up a custom color as well. I'm actually going to choose a preset color. I want to go for a blue. I'm going to click OK and then hit Apply. And you'll notice now in the background that all of my grid dots or grid points are now blue. 
So this helps for situations where you just want a little bit more visibility, or indeed if you just have a preference of color that you would like to use for your grid. And you'll notice that underneath I've got the snap grid point width currently set to three, but let's have a look at what happens if I change it to five. So let's put in five there, press apply, and you'll notice it makes them much thicker. So if you prefer to have thicker or indeed thinner grid points, you can change that in this field here. I'm actually going to set this back down to the default values for now because we're going to have a look at a different option now. So I can click OK. You can also just restore the defaults by pressing this button here, but that will do all of the settings to the default. So hit apply, click OK. And what we're actually going to do now is have a look at some guidelines. So I don't need these vectors anymore. So I'm going to delete all these. And we'll go back up to the top here and we'll click on to toggle, toggle the grid snapping off. And we'll have a look at some guidelines. So how do you bring guidelines into the software? Well, in the 3D view, the way to do it is you right mouse click, you choose guidelines, and you can insert a horizontal, vertical, or angled guideline. We'll go for horizontal for now. And you can see I've got a indicator of where this is positioned currently in the software, and I can change this if I want to. I can also rotate this by left mouse clicking and rotating. And I can left mouse click and drag this guideline around. Now, currently that's set to five. That is the middle of my job because my job is set to be 10 by 10 inches and the X, Y datum is the bottom left corner. So that is zero, which means the middle is five and five in X and Y. So with that in mind, I'm gonna right mouse click, guideline, insert a vertical, and I want this to be in the center as well. So the way to do that is I can press five in this floating field, press enter, and that moves it to that location. Indeed, if I wanted this to be somewhere else, I can press three, enter, and it will move it to the location there as well. But I want this to be in the middle of the job, so I can press five, or I can left mouse click and drag it and drop it there as well. Now, we've had a look at horizontal and vertical guidelines, so let's have a look at angled one. So let's right mouse click again, and we'll go to insert an angled guideline this time. And you'll notice that I can now left mouse click as we did earlier and drag this to rotate the guideline so I can grab that handle to rotate it. I can also move this in X and Y so I can press five, enter, and then five, enter, and that puts it into the middle of my job. And I can input a value for the angle. I can put in 60 if I want to, or indeed I could put in 45. And then I can use these guidelines to help assist make a design. So I'm just going to put another angled one in just to facilitate this. So again, we'll put this to five and I'll press tab five. There we are. And what I'll do this time is I'll rotate this one to 135 or I can literally just put in one, three, five. So now I can use these guidelines to help me design. So let's say I wanted to make a shape but I wanted to make sure the shape was accurate and had some points to snap to to allow me to do that. Well, I can go to the draw pile line tool on the left hand side here and I can now snap to my guideline. My guideline can assist me in making this shape and I can snap to that point there, come over, snap to this one here, come over here, snap to this one there and so forth until I make the shape I want to make. So I can really make the best of my guidelines here to help me in making very particular uh, shapes. So I can just drag my mouse around and use my guidelines to help me facilitate making custom shapes. So you can already see how guidelines can be quite useful. Now you can also use some other options with the guidelines to help you visualize them better as well as uh, lock them down to make sure that they don't move. So if you need a guideline to stay in a particular place so it doesn't move while you're editing your designs, you can do that. And you can also uh, use these to your advantage to help you create designs where you have very specific measurements in mind where you want to manipulate them. So what we're going to do is actually tile our views. And you notice I've got the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I will delete out our vector here and I'm going to delete some of these guides. Now, the way you can do this is in the 2D view, you can right mouse click on a guide and click on this option here to delete guide. And, you'll, and we'll go through some of these other options here in just a moment. 
So I can delete that. In the 3D view, I can simply left mouse click and press delete on the keyboard, and that gets rid of the guide. So that's one way you can get rid of the guide in each of the views. Now, if we come back to the options here for the 2D view, if I right mouse click on a guide, you'll notice I've got this form. So it's guide properties. Now with the selected guide, what it's telling me is the current position is five. We know that from earlier from the 3D view, but if you didn't know that because you're in the 2D view, it tells you that. Now what we can actually do is tell it to move it to a new position. We can delete it. We can uh, see the current angle. We can set a new angle and indeed we can use a slider to set that angle as well. And then as I mentioned earlier, you can lock the guide. So the locking will prevent you dragging the guide. So if I just close up the form, I can kind of drag this guide around right now without issue. But if I right mouse click again on the guide, if I lock it and I close this form, I can no longer drag this. So if you need your guide to be locked because you are making edits in the software where you're selecting a ton of vectors or you're moving the mouse around, a lot, you can lock your guides down to help you prevent moving that guide by accident. Again, you can unlock it by right mouse clicking onto that guide and unchecking the option there. And now we have these options here to create parallel guides. Now this is actually really useful because what you can do is create a new guide at an absolute position. So you can see it's the software, make a new uh, guideline at this position. So if I make one at three, for example, and I click create a new guide, it will now create a new guide at the position that I stated here. Now, what about if I wanted to use a relative to guide? Well, what that will do is it will create a guide relative to the currently selected guide. So if I come out of the form for the moment. So if I go for this guide on the left, for example, and I right mouse click it, this is now the active guide. I will try to do a relative move from that guide. So what I'll be telling the software is I want to create three copies of guides and I want to position them by 0.25 inches relative to where this current guide is. So what the software will do is it'll make three copies of a guideline and there'll be space 0.25 inches evenly across. So if I click on create new guides, you will see now I've got my three new guides relative to the, my original one and they are spaced apart by 0.25. This is quite handy because if you've got a design that requires accurate spacing or accurate guidelines to help you guide your drawings, this is where a tool like this comes in very, very handy. Now you'll also notice I have this option here that says select a new guide. So select new guide occurs where if you create a guide relative to a guide, once that guide is created, it will select the new one. So I can show you an example of this. If I create a new one uh, relative to the current uh, guide and I click on create a new uh, guide, actually I'll go for 0.7 so we can really see where it is, create a new guide. And now that guide has been created and that is now the uh, selected guide. Now what will happen is if I choose to position a guide relative to that one now, because that is the newly selected guide, it'll position my new guide over here. That's one inch away from this guide because that was the previously selected guide. And again, if I go for another inch, it will use this guide because we've got select new guide on and that was the last created guide. And it will create a guide relative to the last one because that was the selected new guide. Now, if I want to delete that guide, I can just click this button here to delete guide and it gets rid of it. And I can do the same for these. And I can delete these one by one. In the 3D view, you can left mouse click and press delete the keyboard to get rid of any ones that you do not uh, need any longer. And you can actually also press in the 2D view this button in the top left here between the rulers. You can press this and that'll turn all the guides off. And in the 3D view, you can actually press uh, this button here to turn off the guides in the 3D view as well. Now you may have noticed in the 2D view we have rulers. Now this is a way you can drag in guidelines from the 2D view. So if you left mouse click on the ruler on the sides here, I can left mouse click and drag in a guide. Again, you get the value there to tell you where you're positioning it in the sheet in Y. And I can do the same for the other one to tell me where it is in X. And I can drag in one from the left hand side as well if I want to. 
Now, if we just go back to the 3D view there, we're going to maximize our view. And we're actually going to look at some other options for the guidelines in terms of visibility. So let's go back up to Edit, Options. And what we're going to do now is go back to the 3D view settings. Let's scroll down just a little bit. So we've got that at the top there. And I've got these three options here. So I've got Guideline Color, Locked Guideline Color, and Guideline Thickness. So I'll just move my left uh, my menu over to the left here with the left mouse button held down. Let's change our guideline color. I'm going to make this a really obvious color such as blue. Again, similar to the snapping grid earlier, you can use a custom color so you can create your own custom color here. Or you can choose one of the ones on the grid here. I'll choose blue and I'll click OK and I'll hit apply. And now my guidelines are in blue, nice and clear. So if you again want some extra visibility or if you just have a preference for a color, you can change that here as well. And similarly to the uh, snapping grid, you can also use um, the thickness. So currently it's a one. I'll change it to three to show you how this looks. So I'll press enter and hit apply. And you can see just how thick the uh, guidelines get now. So if you really need extra visibility or you just prefer to have thicker guidelines or indeed thinner ones, you can do that by changing this value here. And you'll also notice I can change the locked guideline color. Well, let's have a look at that, shall we? So if I change that color to, let's go for a uh, green. So let's make sure it's nice and obvious for, aside from the blue, which one is our locked one. I'll click apply, hit OK, and if I tile my views again, if I right mouse click on this one and I uh, lock that guide, click on close, you'll notice immediately in the 3D view it has now gone green. So our locked guide is nice and visible there. So if you're transitioning between the views or if you prefer working in one view more than the other, you can still see that visibility and you can set that custom visibility um, by using the options there to your advantage. So if I unlock that, you'll notice it'll go back to being blue. And again, if I lock it, it goes back to being green. So let's close out that form and let's maximize our view again. And you'll notice that when I left mouse click on the locked guide here, I cannot move it. I cannot left mouse click and move it because it is locked, but I can still move the other guides if I would like to in the 3D view, but you get a nice clear visual as to which one is locked. Now we should go over some final options for the guidelines, which are under the view menu. So if you follow my mouse point up to the top left here, click on view, we'll go to guidelines and you have a couple options here. You've got guidelines or guides visible, delete all guides, lock all existing guides and unlock all existing guides. If I lock all the existing guides, they all go green. So you can see how beneficial it is to change those colors as we did earlier because you get a nice clear visual as to a change occurring. And in this case, we know it is the locked uh, change because we've both selected it in this menu, but also we've got the color to indicate that that is the locked state. If I click on unlock all existing guides, you'll notice they go back to being blue because that is the color we have set for our standard guides. So again, nice clear visual as to what state the guides are currently in. And if we go up to the top and click on view, we can, of course, delete all guides. We can make them invisible as well. If I click on the guidelines to guides visible, it will also make them visible again. But I can click guidelines, delete all guides, and all the guides have now been deleted. So if you're at the end of a job and you no longer need those guidelines, you can get rid of those as well. And that covers our guide on snapping grid and guidelines. I hope you have found this useful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.